Welcome to the match. This is Tommy Carabazas from Chicago, Illinois, doing my first commentary of the day. Um, we're going to see a great match here with two of the greatest living legends that Poole has, Earl Strickland and Thorsten Holman. I have my colleague here with me, Gene. Hey, how you hello. doing, Tom? I'm doing fine. I just can't get over last night. I was watching the, the Hall of Fame banquet in Earl Strickland. If you get a chance, make sure you see a tape of uh, his, um, in, you know, his speech with Jim Rempe on the induction into the Hall of Fame. It's, uh, it's really funny. Okay, we got Earl Strickland shooting off the end rail. Sometimes it's good to win the, the lag, other times it's not. So I, I was wondering, they say that during the 10 foot era that you won the lag, you broke the balls because this opening shot's always difficult unless you get really lucky. Yeah, I think the cloth might have had something to do with wanting to break the balls. Um, you have more control, um, possibly on a slower cloth, you know, when you broke the balls and bring them back together. Earl was hitting him very good in his earlier match with Dan Baruti this afternoon, this morning. And um, I expect to see, you know, Earl play well if he gets... You know, the ball's rolling a little bit in his direction when he's breaking clusters. You know, he's definitely a threat to win this match. Absolutely. Thorsten's been a machine, but um, early on in the match, when you watch a player play, it's that first rack that's really important. You know, you know, tend to slow down. Earl's a quick player, but he's smart enough to slow down, you know, try to get a... Uh, Try to make sure you get on the balls as you start getting a feel for the pool table. And the first rack is the, the key for most players. They get through the first rack and on a break shot, they get, they're, a, they're a definite threat to run some balls. Okay, the way that Earl solved the problem there was with a, with a bank shot. Uh, what would sailors say about bank shots in straight pool games? Oh, you don't shoot bank shots. <laughs> No, the old-time players, uh, they wouldn't shoot a lot of bank shots, but they could if they had to. You know, cross-side is okay like that. Uh, when the nine-ball players started playing the straight pool, you saw a little more of that. Today, a player has to be an all-around good player with, uh, you know, all-around tournaments, like uh, where they play one pocket and bank pool. You know, and every game helps its helps your p overall pool game. Uh, the great players back in the day played a lot of three-cushion billiards. You know, your Ralph Greenleaf was, you know, just under world champion speed in billiards, and so was Willie Moscone, Steve Miserak. But I know Dallas had a high run of 29 in three-cushion. He beat uh, he beat Torborn Bloomdell in a 50-point billiard match. Right. You know, so you're talking if you can beat a guy like that, you know, you obviously can play billiards. Earl, Earl told me he's the best guy in the world at shooting the ball down the rail. And I asked Earl, uh, where do you aim? He says, I, I really don't aim. I just uh, figure out what kind of English uh, I need to put on the object ball to make it a bigger pocket. And that's what I put on the cue ball to help it. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I played in this tournament and I decided that you got to learn when you're here. I got eliminated early, unfortunately. But uh, and while you're here, you should be learning. And you know, Sailor motto was he never left the pool table until he learned something that day. Earl 
opened up the rack. There's no balls touching now. I think he's going to be able to pick around there. I don't see a very easy break shot to figure out, though. The three ball, if he puts the cue ball on the rail, is, right. I think, his best option. The two ball is a little bit low, but could be usable. You know, and right now, he's just trying to figure out how to pick off the balls and you know where to get to. He might try to manufacture a break shot where you bump another ball and try to put it in a better position. Might be trying to move the three here a little bit, just bounce it out. I think he might have been trying to do that and get by or so what do you think, Gene? Is the are those earplugs in the yeah. Strickland's? <laughs> yep, that's yeah. Um Earl had some um, difficulty, I guess it was yesterday, uh, with folks talking on the rail, so uh, I think he uh, wants to insulate himself from uh, outside distractions. And it's so important in the pool if you can get in a trance light state that we call dead stroke. You really don't hear or see any of the periphery when you're in that state, but in, until you get there, you might hear everything, you know, so if you can help yourself. Um, you know, a lot of players listen to music while right. they're playing, and, but I don't think they allow you to do that in the in the tournament here. <laughs> I haven't seen guys playing with earbuds and head and headphones. Now Earl's uh, hmm. definitely a little on the eccentric side. I knew I'd screw it up. Oh, okay. Well, he's given himself a problem here. And we have a mic on the table so you can hear some of the comments from Earl. This is a very thin cut to the rail and you gotta worry about bumping into the, the three ball. The three yeah. ball. And yeah, that's the problem he has. You almost you know you want to be sure you stay away from it, but he's going to try to draw and right. shoot a little tougher shot. See how he stayed away from the street mm -hmm. ball, hasn't, well, just breaking off the eight in the side. He's just going to follow it up and get on the eight. And much to form, he shot that ball up in the corner, no problem. Right. Actually, just that, you know, I've seen very few side pocket break shots at this table just during the course of the week. A strangely high number of behind the rack uh, shots, break shots. Uh, guess just how the table played. Well, the behind the rack break shot is very controllable to put your cue ball back in the center of the table after you hit the rack. You know, so that's a nice shot to have below the rack. Uh, the first tournament, I think that was the only shot that Johnny Archer knew. He played in the U.S. Open and he ran 150 balls. He ran 150 balls and every break shot was below the rack. Okay. This is not the first time we've had uh, a bit of chatter about racking the balls. Uh, Torsten told Mike to rack them himself, but... Uh, that's not how it's done in this one. Yeah, you, you got to rack for your opponent, and it's hard to freeze every ball in the rack, and Earl apparently saw a ball that wasn't frozen. And once again, a lot of it isn't the rack, it's the balls, you know, the way they fall sometimes, the cloth, and I don't know. I don't think it makes all that big a deal. Although I did find something out that uh, when you're playing a game like nine ball, you know, it's, you get over 50 years old, you think you froze the balls, and if you're not wearing your glasses, they're not frozen. <laughs> you know, so if you're over 50, you probably slug yourself half the time. 
So watch out for that, guys. Perfectly executed off the top of the rack to the side rail, back to the center of the table. You should get a shot if you leave your cue ball there. That's all you can really do on a shot uh, when you're breaking the balls is try to figure out where the cue ball is going and put it in a position uh, where it gives you a chance to have the most shots. Siegel used to hate to have the to break with the follow going toward the short rail because a lot of times you freeze on the short rail with no shot. You know, and you see if he would have been frozen on the short rail he'd be banking the five ball would have been his only shot. Certainly lots of room to maneuver in the way he broke up the balls. But we didn't want a collision, did we? No, Earl was trying to spin around mm -hmm. around the ball, and the ball tends to take wide angles. Uh, the, the cloth grabs really nicely for shots like that, so you can spin around him. So he probably wasn't... Some was consciously trying to put a lot of English on it because you kind of overdo it. Earl can be very dangerous uh, once again at this game. Uh, he pockets balls so well. You know, if he falls onto a break shot, you know, executes like he's thinking enough to where he got in the side pocket break shot. And, if you're thinking good, you can tend to run balls, you know, no matter what your knowledge of straight pull is, because it's still just pull and playing position and pocketing balls. But if you want to consistently run balls, you, you really have to study the game. It takes three years to become a great, knowledgeable straight pull player playing with the top players in the world. And, a lot of practice. Where nine ball, I think you can become a good player if you got a good stroke. You can learn the game within a, a year. You see guys coming up all the time. Like one year they can't play, the next year they're beating everybody. Back to the center of the table. He's just picking them off, trying to keep from running into any balls. You really shouldn't run into balls if if the balls are open like this. A traditional straight pool player wouldn't do this and run into a ball like that. And that, and that. Okay, now we now we've got problems. Yeah, you just had all the balls wide open, you know, in a good position, and now you tied balls up. You, jacked up on one shot. You hope you got the ball in the side. Uh, when Earl does something like that, he's got to hope he falls into a shot like he just did. I think he has an angle to just break these up a little bit. I would draw the cue ball into the stripe ball and open up the three, play position on the three, or possibly the stripe up in the corner. He saw he didn't even have to break it. The, uh, the stripe goes in the corner, you know, so that's a little better. But he's got an angle where he's got to slide over a little bit too far. He wants to leave the 13 as a break shot, and he might have to slide over a little bit too much. Ah, the three might go in the side pocket or possibly all the way in the corner. And again, we'll see how Earl shoots down the rail. What type of English looks like he's got a Nice spin on the ball. You know, one thing I noticed about Earl, 35 years ago I saw him playing in tournaments. He'd be playing nine ball tight pockets and he would hit the rail and the ball would go in. And then Dallas told me it's a shooter's touch is the way he explained it. But I think there's a little bit more to that. Okay. Earl hit the head a little inside English, kept his angle, he's on his break shot. Three racks. Two racks. Two racks. And we had so much break in between, I lost a rack. <laughs> <laughs> 
But get back to Earl's uh, Hall of Fame induction speech for Jim Rempe. He, 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 was, he sounded like a professional comedian. You would have thought that he, he practiced this speech for months and get his rhythm and timing was perfect. But he was just being Earl. Right, right. And when I realized that it wasn't rehearsed, I couldn't stop laughing. You definitely have to catch it if you, if you can. I gave a speech for Frank Saylor, you know, he couldn't be here, so I accepted his award. And that was the, you know, the hardest thing I've, I've ever done, you know, trying to accept an award for somebody else to go in the Hall of Fame. You really don't want to screw that up, you know. But everybody said I got through it fine. So Absolutely did a fine job. Thanks again, Gene. The interesting thing about Sailor, he had a small pool room in Racine, Wisconsin, and it called Sailor's uh, Sailor's Grill and Recreation. And he had straight pool was the game back then, and he had a ladder club where he would put your name on a plaque. Once you ran 25 balls, you would be in the 25 ball club. Nice jacked up shot by Earl. He shoots jacked up as good as anybody. Um, so he had a 50 ball club, you know, in the ladder club, and a 100 ball club, and he had designated tables for whatever club you were in that you could only play on them if you were in that club. You know, so 100 ball runners would play on one table, you know, whenever they wanted to, and it would just stay there vacant if there wasn't one of them wasn't in the house that night. There was. Uh, close to 50 players in his, in his ladder club, so you're talking uh, 50 players that can run 25 or more balls in a small town in Racine, Wisconsin. Can you imagine if Sailor was living here in New York City, how many how many players there would be? And there's a huge amount of straight pool players came out of the East Coast. Earl stroking the ball nice. It's yep. gonna be it's gonna be dangerous. Earl told me something you know, I asked him about a straight pool and he says that's the greatest game. He goes, When I figured out about fifteen, twenty years ago he started playing straight pool in his basement. He would practice five hours uh, let me see, eight hours a day for five years. He said I couldn't run a, a rack when I started. But I got to be a 400 ball runner and I ran 200 many times. You know, so, you know, he, he recognized, you know, why, why straight pool will help your overall pool game, the touch, the breaking out clusters, and everything that goes into making a good straight pool player will help all your games. Except maybe bank. So it's a great thing that Charlie Williams and his partner Cindy are running this event, you know, World Championship and keeping straight pool alive and well. Um, Dr. Michael Fedak, he um, sponsors this tournament. And, uh, you know, we should all be grateful because we wouldn't be watching this if he wasn't involved. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and he's a fan. He's sitting there in the stands watching <laughs> Watching the match, he's in there early. You know, he's gonna pay for it. You know, he's <laughs> he, he must like it. <laughs> there, Earl looks like he can slide over. You know, when you're up close to the ball, if you're within a foot of the ball, you can usually control that slide over shot exactly how you want to. Uh, that one got away from him. Yeah. That one, I think I think he'll handle it though, right? Yeah, and a shot like this when you're cutting the ball about 90 degrees. Um, and a real thin hit, the only thing you got to watch out for is that cue ball coming back into the object ball. Right. But um, a shot like this, you don't want to put any English on it. You put top English, no side on it. Because, you know, it's really not going to have a, an effect on the 
on the object ball hitting it that thin and you don't want to miss it you know so the best thing to do that I found is to level on the shot just hit it with no English cut the ball and hit it with good speed you don't want to baby this shot a little more speed you work your way through the rack Hitting at that speed, he got that second kiss in the rack off that bottom ball and almost went in the corner. Uh, if you hit it harder, you go through the rack and you don't scratch in the corner because the force follow, you know, pushes it toward the other pocket and away from the one you're worried about scratching. A little bit of follow, stay inside the ball. The best way to get up table is just like that. You stay inside the ball. You're not going to a rail. You know, it's easier to control to get back to the center of the table. We'll probably go into balls right here. Um, you know, with a little bit of draw. You know, again, not what the old time straight blue players would do. Almost tied up those two balls on the uh, on the left. You know, early on, the, you know, Pearl might have scratched on that break shot, and he. Uh, the traditional thing he sort of apologized to Torsten for his good luck <laughs> and to the rail and it sort of that that hand wave that yeah okay I got away with something yeah and like I said before this man started if the uh, balls are rolling a little bit and shots like that are open pocket balls all day right now he's in his fourth rack and when you're playing straight pool, every rack is a different a different milestone. Like you go from being a 15 ball runner to you know a 28 ball runner to a 42 ball runner where you're getting in the third rack all the time. Uh, you know, to where you get to be a 70 ball runner. Once you get into that fifth rack, you know, the 100 just comes after the 70. It's not like you consistently get to the fifth rack. Once you run 70 balls or 50 balls, it's just a matter of putting two runs of 50 together. Here's just going to draw back and not touch the ball. Folks, I understand the audio was a little bit low on the commentators. We're trying to keep it down as to give neither, either of the players any reason uh, that we shot them. Right, right. So uh, should be a little bit better now, though. Okay. Um, I mean, there have been uh, problems, you some people may recall, in uh, 2010 uh, where there were complaints from the players about the broadcast booth being uh, audible to the players on the TV table. Yeah, like, you don't want to know that you're in a tough spot. <laughs> You know, you don't want to hear it again. You pretty much know you're in a tough spot where you, you know, you start thinking about the worst thing in straight pool you can do is be indecisive. Like you get down in a shot and you're, you know, watching the cue ball to see where it's going to hit the, the ball that you're running into instead of the ball you're shooting at. If you make up your mind before you get down, you know, and how you're going to hit the ball is the only way to play straight pool and run balls consistently. Like here, you got to make up your mind, you're going to stop the ball. Right. If you stop the ball, you, you're on your angle. Uh, you got to know if you're going to come back two inches before you get down a shot. Like here, he should have went and looked to see how far he wants to follow. You know, but he came up short automatically is the other way to do that because you know if you go to the rail, you can kill the cue ball. You know, it's right. called 56 is the current run. Uh, when you're going to the rail, it's called leaning on the rail. Like You leave yourself an angle where you have to go to a cushion. And because if you can get to a cushion off the ball, you can get anywhere on the table. Uh, if you would have gotten inside the ball, it would have been difficult to go to the opposite rail. Right. right. Uh, you know, and you'd have to come with a much stronger shot than what he what he did coming up a little short and using the rail. <laughs> Looks like he's going to hit the rack high. 
Looks like he's hitting a draw to the back of the... Well, he hit it with a foul. When you see the ball hook like that, you know it's a forced foul on the ball. Rails never lie. You know, so if you're hitting the rail and you think you got right hand English when you stroke it and the cue ball hits the rail and drops back down to the left, guess what? You had left hand English on the cue <laughs> ball. You know, the, the rails don't lie. Okay, so he's going to work on this cluster now. We had, uh, no, he's, he's looking to the side. I thought. You could shoot low, but he wants to get to the center of the table where he can get in the right. middle of the balls and start picking them off. Um, yeah, I'm, su I'm, su I'm surprised he doesn't look the rack over a little more. There's usually something dead in the rack, a combination that you have to know, not that you would shoot it, but you have to know what your options are for when you run short and a shot right, or go right. too far. A little bit of draw here. You don't want to run into the ball. He's no, following. <laughs> uh, the ball's a little closer to the rail, so yeah, the eight was in a good spot, so it didn't matter running into the ball there. Follow up to the center of the table. He was trying to get that ball on the right. rail. I don't know why. He's, he has a lot of work here. And when you go into the rack, you want to leave that eight ball on the rail so you have something to shoot in case when you break them, you don't get nothing else. Look here, if you go into the rack and you just get frozen, at least you got the eight ball in the corner if that other ball was in there. Well, a little <laughs> bit of trouble here. Yep. A little bit of trouble here. A lot of trouble. Yeah. Looks like combinations, bank shots are his only options. Now Earl can play safety when he wants to. I've seen him, you know, feather a ball and play safe and leave the cue ball right on the rail a couple times in one of his other matches. So his eyes are still good. Yeah, no, I think. Make sure that you stop by and there he goes, corner pocket. See how okay. slipped, it slipped in. Touched the rail and still goes That's in. That's right. I'm telling you, he's got the patent on that shot. Okay. The downside was he turned, he, uh, they're not tied up. They can be approached from the other, the left hand side of the table, but they're two balls closer together than they, uh, they were when that shot started. There's two ways you can run a hundred balls, you know, on a nine-foot table, um, as opposed to the old five by tens. You couldn't really scramble on a five by ten because the shots were so tough. But you know, on a nine-foot table, you know, Dallas was telling me that you know you can run balls just by executing shot to shot the way Earl is. You know, making that tough shot in the corner when he has to. You know, figuring out something else to do. And you know, I call that scrambling. Uh, the other way you can play is to pick off balls. You know, just stop, stop, stop. Right. And really, you know, have a much more control game. And both, you know, both styles work. You know, but you have to have that scrambling style incorporated in your game also because a lot of times things like this happen. You hit a ball, you end up jacked up. You know, if you can't shoot jacked up or if you can't make a long shot. Um, you won't be a great player. A lot of people say how great a position player Moscone was. They're absolutely right. But, uh, you know, he was an unbelievable shot maker, too. Earl, when he jacks up, he automatically chokes up in the stick. Nice, nice little short stroke. You know, he, he he goes from stroke to stroke. His touch is really, really great to watch. And we got to keep enjoying this because, you know, the more Earl goes, the, the less we might see Thorsten. You know? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> This looks like to be the key rack for Earl. He's really struggling here. 
You know, so if he can get through this rack and get out of break shot, I expect him to loosen up and run 100 balls. Right, and he, uh, he will be at that uh, five-rack level you were talking about, the 70-ball threshold. And now we're, you know, now we're moving. Yeah, it looks like he can do two ways. He can play position for the ball and break in the side or go two rails and get on the corner. Uh, he's going to go yeah. one rail, trying for the side pocket, and that's the problem with this shot. You know, you, mm. you know you're rolling the ball. You really, you know, players hate to roll the ball that much because, you know, I think cuts like that, that's when the hockey ball tends to skid. Right. You know, so you don't want to slow roll it. So sometimes you overamp a little bit, and you know you just got to do it. You know, and take your chance in a spot like that. This is again that 90 degree cut in the side pocket. You want to hit it with no English, just a high ball. Hit it with good speed. You won't scratch. Well, he took the other option. He, uh, or you can say, it safe. yeah. Or you can say I'm playing Thorsten Holman, and I don't want to bust open the rack for him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's usually a good well, strategy. Don't open the rack for Thorsten. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that unless you have a very comfy chair. So he had his 70 ball run, but he didn't get on the break shot. This is a soft hit. Just leave the cue ball on the rail. You know, you, you want to block him from seeing the nine ball on the side rail because you can shoot the nine ball up table and leave him behind the rack. Earl looks like he's going to thin cut off the rack here. You know, what you want to do is just drop down to the short rail if you can. But you would have to hit the ball. The ball's too full in order to do that. So he might thin it and come straight across in the same spot. It looks like he's spinning to kick the nine up the table. Mm -hmm. you know, he hit it pretty good. He got a rail, left the nine in front of the pocket. But Thorsten has no shot. That makes it an excellent safety because you put a ball in play that it's hard to play safe on that nine ball. Right. You have to leave them behind the ball, otherwise it's open. And it's always open for a possible kick. You know, so Earl did a, little, a lot there in terms of putting some heat on Thorsten. Thorsten's got to shoot the ball and try to stop and stay in the rack. It looks like he can do that. The dark ball, I believe it's the four ball that he needs to just shoot and stay there. It might be the eight ball. It's hard to tell. Yeah, very difficult from where we are. Now, Thorsten hit it a little too hard. He wanted to leave that ball in the short rail. This way, you, you know, Earl can just roll off the ball and leave the cue ball on the rail. Well, he went back in, which surprised me again. You know, Thorson's looking to see if something right. got dead. You know, anytime you touch a ball in a stack like this, you know, something can get dead. Thorson sees something. I don't know if he can hit it. He's looking at that eight ball, you know, the four, the four ball in the corner, the, right. the two ball to go into the three, off the ball, carom into the other ball. It's, the shot's close. But um, not close enough. He's going to play safe. Just draw to the rail here. Stay about the same spot. Knock the ball. Now see, Thorsten left him on the rail. You know, it makes it a little bit harder for Earl to do something in this spot. So what Earl's got to do, I think, is just take a scratch and roll up into him. But Earl's doing the right thing. You check the rack first, you know, see if there's a dead ball. You know, you might be able to kick at something, get out of the, get out of this trap. Yep, that's. He's playing the 14 ball. He's kicking into the rail. The ball has to throw a little bit, so you got to hit the right side of the ball. He did. It didn't throw enough. You know, like 
when you're shooting directly at a ball, you can hit the ball where you want to and have it throw into the pocket. But now hitting a half of the ball when you're kicking at something to get it to throw, I don't like that. I think if the ball is wired, you know, then I'll kick at it like I know if I hit anywhere. Right, right. You know, but if you got to throw the ball when you're kicking, it makes it very difficult. Caught. Thorsten gets his first shot at the table, 70 balls down. Um, one thing that I noticed when I came back, when straight pools started coming back, I used to watch Siegel and Rempe and Mizrak when they were playing good, and it seemed like, um, you know, when guys ran 100 balls, guys came back with 100 ball runs. You know, I didn't see a lot of that until the last couple of years. It's like the players have been playing enough where I've seen guys run 99 in the preliminaries, another guy run 100 and out. Right. You know, so the, the quality of play is getting better, you know, in terms of uh, players realizing that they have a chance when they're way behind. Um, in Maryland, I saw Thorsten playing Johnny Archer, and Johnny had him run 100 balls and had him down, and it was like nothing. He just ran 100 back, you know. <laughs> Thorsten's playing really well. You know, he's truly a professional. He's he's in shape, studies the game, keeps his game tight, gets his rest. You, you, you can just see he's ready to play every time he gets to the table. And I expect this first rack to be a big key here. You know, well, like, like here, he just took a chance, and I don't see any <laughs> ball goes. By taking a chance is... I was surprised he did that. Yeah, yeah, that was... That's when you see good players mess up. That first rack when they get to the table, getting through it, you know, you, you have to be a little more methodical, you know, to take the chances of something like this happening, you know. Once you get rolling, it seems like you shoot a shot like that, you slide off the pack, and you got 27 shots, and there's only 14 balls. <laughs> but, you know, early on, it's a little more difficult, you know, to get your mind thinking correctly. So the great players, that first rack after they've been in the chair, um, Earl just came off a 70-ball run, and you don't want to let him back to the table real right. quickly. I'm not sure what this is. Oh, Some kind taken. of safe. He's going back into the two balls was the idea, but he left him a shot sure, in is. the side pocket, or possibly a combo on the ball sitting in the corner. I just want to make a quick announcement. Uh, AccuStats Make It Happen event is going to take place November 6th through the 9th. Make sure to check out AccuStats.com. That's A-C-C-U hyphen S-T-A-T-S dot com. Also, they're going to be covering the U.S. Open October 13th through the 18th. AccuStats.com. Girl shooting in the side. He buries okay. him. Yeah, that... Uh, Thorsten needed to get on top of those balls to make it a good save. Let him back to the table too quick. You know, Earl's still in stroke. Right. You know, when, when a guy puts a 70-ball run on you, you want to keep him in the chair for a while. You know, let him let him cool off. A lot of times guys struggle after a big run if you can do that. Well, you know, sort of a strange amount of uh, sort of, you know, mortality from Torsten, you know, a pool god because... You know, when I'm playing and a um, guy pops a run on me, I often want to get to the table and get it all back at once. Now, here I come, right? And that's a good way to be sitting down very quickly. Uh, a lot of times you jump up there and you hit your first shot and you either miss it or you just your cue ball's in a spot where you can't shoot another ball in because you rushed up to the table. Well, that's so, right, yeah. So happy to shoot. But you're only going to get one ball at a time. <laughs> Yeah, you can't make up 100 balls in one shot. And, um, you know, what I find is that, you know, you're being careful when you first start taking a slow walk up to the table. 
And that jumping up, just assessing, being ready to shoot is, uh, is an art. You know, some players can sit in a chair and be more ready to shoot than other guys that have been sitting in a chair. Sailor talks about that. But I didn't have time to ask him exactly <laughs> what he's saying. But he would tell me, you know, if you're playing somebody, put a bag over your head. It doesn't matter who you're playing. Um, you know, never wish a player good luck. You're just lying. If you do wish the guy good luck, you're a masochist. <laughs> you know, tell him may the best man win or play well, but not good luck. But uh, Sailor would follow Moscone around whenever he did an exhibition in the area within 200 miles. Sailor was in the audience, and um, you know, he would study all his mannerisms. Uh, he wanted to be just like Moscone. Uh, he even started smoking cool cigarettes, like how many people know that Moscone used to smoke cools? You know, I might start smoking. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that must have been it. That's, that was the secret. <laughs> Not the best possible roll. Earl bumped the balls, and same thing that happened to Thorsten happened to him, except he's got a shot in the side pocket where he can yeah. then spin him and break him up. And, and this is the key. He got a shot where he can just stop the ball, go to the rail, and break off the five ball. What you don't want to do is try to get too much of an angle here on the five ball and get yourself stuck behind the rack where you can't see the ball. So he's very careful. Uh, the one nice thing about the pro straight pool tournaments is they outline the rack. Right. So you know exactly where the rack is and, you know, your, your line of vision. Okay, so 81 to 3. Straight pool, you wonder is this a is this a close match or not? Well, for these guys, you know they're within striking distance anytime they get a shot. You know, in a 150 point game, um, I was playing earlier in the 100 point matches, and you know, I lost four matches out of five. But my four matches, I had in, I was in the 30s or 40s. You know, and I'm one shot away from winning. You know, I break the balls and scratch. You know, you're really not out of the, not out of a hundred-point match ever. You know, with the quality of players in this field, 150, it's a little different story. There's a lot more pool. You can figure to get five, you know, three to six open innings per game, or you get a shot. And if you're not taking advantage of those open innings, you know, it's your fault. You know, Thorsten got one so far. But that's what I was talking about again. Earl got that shot where, you know, he made a mistake and was able to scramble and get back to back to his spot. All the people that think you don't have to be a shot maker to play straight pull are absolutely dead wrong. Okay, so here, this cluster is going to get massaged. Yeah, it looks like the eight goes by the one, so he's just going to go into the rack a little bit. He had protection on the lower ball if he would have stuck to the rack. He, he went off it. And the reason he's upset is because he knocked the object ball to the rail. He right. wanted to leave it for in a position for a break shot near the side of the stack. He hit it a little hard, you, you might think, but a lot of times it's you hit the pocket, you overcut the pocket a little bit, so you ended up putting more speed on the cue ball than you figured. There again, he's trying to knock out another break shot, you know, knowing that he would have the 11 ball as his, um, as his out. 
Or it might be the 13. It's hard to tell. It was 11. Playing position. And the 13 looks like it might go by the 9 or the 1 ball there. Um, if not, a very easy breakout here is to shoot the 4 ball that's right in the middle of the rack. I go one rail into those two balls right. on the side rail. You should be able to make this billiard you know, every time. But uh, it looks like he has room if he's going to shoot at it. He's just a little worried. He's slightly jacked up and stretching. Now, what do you do, Gene, when you're slightly jacked up like this? Will, will you put English on the ball or, you know, if you have to get around that object ball? You know, sometimes you might as well put the English on it and make up your mind to hit it like that because in order to get away from the object from, right. from the obstructing ball you you need to hit the side of the cue ball so you might as well you know set up to hit it on the side and make up your mind rather than try to spin your stick over there when, once you get down in a shot but once again make up your mind before you're going to shoot what you're going to do take the ball off the rail. That's right. It, that's not a good key ball to leave because if you don't get perfect angle on it, it's hard to hold the cue ball and you tend to bounce it too far. Or you're just going to be rolling. If you get anywhere, the, the key ball that he left, you can play for four pockets. You know, so depending on how you want to hit this four ball, you can draw, shoot it in one side pocket. You can follow, shoot it in the other side pocket. If you come up short, you can have either corner. He decided to draw and shoot it in the, our left side pocket on our screen. Straight shot, so just figuring out exactly where the ball should be. That looks, uh, it will do something. And again, that was the triangle system that Sailor teaches. You know, where you leave balls that you can get different places on them, you know, and still fall into your shot. It looks like they're playing perfect position, but, you know, depending on where you get on that four ball is how you would have played position on that key ball. Leaving the right balls at the end of the rack allows you flexibility. And after about 100 years of the triangle and straight pull, it's still not square. <laughs> <laughs> still works. It's still relevant today. I think that the old-time players, you know, didn't hit the object balls. The break shot is hard for, for one reason. Uh, they played on a 10-foot table when Irving Crane and Greenleaf were first getting into the game. Jimmy Karras, Masconi, on a 10-foot table, if you would blast the balls all over a 10-foot table, you know, you're going up and down and right. doing a lot of traveling. Also, that side pocket break shot, you're cutting the table in half, was a lot more relevant on a 10-foot table. Right. That's why they, you know, uh, I'm really not that old. I didn't see Greenleaf play, but... <laughs> <laughs> but actually, when I was a kid, you know, there were guys who claimed that they played Greenleaf and so forth, and uh, and uh, they said that his favorite break shot was the, the side pocket break. Uh, you have a lot of control on the side pocket break, you know, the cue ball, and you're staying above the rack, again, which Siegel, you know, wants his cue ball above the rack after he breaks the balls. It's very important. Earl's looking at somebody in the crowd. He's he's Earl. If you're unfamiliar with Earl, he's the John McEnroe of pocket billiards. Well, he has a little, uh, you know, as a guy who plays the rail, a little different from Siegel. Siegel usually makes a friend for a match and spends his entire time in conversation with his his new friend. Yeah, he would start talking to me. I had no idea what he's talking about. He's just trying to get loose talk, and it helped help him to stay loose, and he would drive players nuts. 
because they'd be listening to him talking all the time, you know. But that's how he's one of the ways Siegel would stay loose is by talking. Earl's then in that dead stroke. He's uh, he's noticing everything going on, and he's out of line one inch, and he's getting upset, you know. Uh, Shouldn't get self-destructive when you're up 95 to three. Right. Although I played uh, Earl in the U.S. Open one time, and he wouldn't stop ranting about how bad he was playing. He was winning 10 to two, going 11. <laughs> Man, I played so bad, I can't believe it. I can't make a ball. I go, how do you think I feel? You know. <laughs> so I was just thinking about. Uh in 92 when Siegel beat Dallas in the uh, in the final the US Open in the remember. US Open he was at the Roosevelt oh uh, a little drama here uh, Siegel was uh, fit, you know, just about to run out and uh, he snuck a smoke and got caught on camera there's no smoking in the ballroom okay he solved that one All right. yeah he had a little little cut shot there Okay. And that ball goes a little further past the side pocket and, you know, gets in a funny spot. Yeah. Makes it difficult. Again, when you're playing position for a ball like that, you don't want to play it sh stopping short of the rail. You always want to hit the rail and bounce off it because if you bounce and go a little bit too far, you still got a cut shot. If you're trying to stop before you get to the rail and you go a little bit too far, you get straight in on the rail. Okay, he aimed at that two-ball cluster. And, hmm, well, let him tell you. Earl's got the ball in yeah. the corner. Yeah, he's he, got the six. You know, he could shoot the ball down the rail, possibly. If, uh, there might not be a scratch there. It's hard to tell. But he's going two rails, should get on the two ball. Uh-oh. A good straight pull player can freeze the cue ball on the rail. Uh, you can tell he didn't have his position on the rail, so, you know, something happened there. He missed the ball. If he would have made the ball, I'm sure he would have gotten where he wanted to. But this rack's laying a little tough. Um, score is around 105 to 3 at this time. There we have it on, our, on your screen. Slur got in between the six and the nine in that shot. Yeah, you, know, you gotta be want to be a little more careful now coming out. See how he took an angle where right. you can go to the, go rail, to the rail now. If you yeah. have to. Uh, you can hold it up if you're a little straight, you know, and you feel good about it. You can hold it up, but going to the rail is pretty simple. Okay. So uh, Torsten Holman likes it a whole lot better when he's got a, he's not sitting down. And he has a break shot. Yep. That's like a, you know, a dangerous person. It's, it'd be like a criminal with a gun. You have <laughs> Torsten with a break shot. And again, this first rack. He's got a ball in the side, side pocket. pocket. Yeah. You know, but uh, if he gets through this first rack, you know, that's going to be the key. You can usually tell when a great player starts going to get off on a big run. He starts falling on that break shot, where it's just like he did the last one, where it's just like stop the ball or slide over a little bit. When you see him getting the exact angle that they want on the break shot. Uh, they're they're going to run a lot of balls because you hit the break shot the way you want to with control, and you'll get shots. 
So I'm interested to see how he gets through this rack and if he can get on a break shot. There's a lot of work to do. Comes up one rail. He's going to cut this ball backwards in the corner pocket. You'll get a nice split on the balls. Uh, you you got to make shots like this. You know, it's a hard shot, but you, you leave the nine ball there for protection. Well, I'll tell you, I just overheard a couple of of the spectators up on the rail that happened to be from Germany. They traveled all the way in. They were saying, you know what, uh, in broken English or German English, uh, I don't know how you can say that, they said, Torsten, go. You know, <laughs> Torsten can do it from here. We all know that. So they're pretty excited. A lot of people here are smothering every seat around the rail. Um, all right, I'm stepping out. Mm -hmm. And he needed that protection with the nine ball as right. a safety valve, we call it. That's your safe shot. You, you look for other shots if you got in something else. And, you know, you'd like to work from inside the rack if you can. You know, get the cue ball and work from the inside rather than pick them all off. I think the best way to pick them off is you just shoot from the inside and start shooting them in the sides on the two corners. Thorsten can play both styles. He can play the scrambling style or he can play the pickoff style. That's what makes him such a great player. As in Rockford taking pool lessons, Dallas West ran over 300 balls while we were practicing and he was scrambling and cutting balls and backwards and breaking into this cluster house, smashing the rack. And he says, yeah, I run 300 scrambling, but I also run 300 where I just pick, 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 you know. So if you have both aspects to your straight pool game, of, you know, both styles, you know, that's what makes you a super dangerous player. Siegel looked like he was scrambling because his cue ball would travel more than the average straight pool player, but it was traveling because he never wanted to touch another ball. Anytime the balls weren't touching, you know, Mike would play his way around the rack, and it was just, you had to be a tremendous shot maker to be able to play like he did. You know, but he didn't want to leave. You know, he's just such a scaredy cat, I think. You know, he just never wanted to take a chance, you know. And, and, you know, I know that sounds funny, but, you know, a great player is scared, but, you know, I think that's the secret of play, <laughs> playing really good, you know, is that you have that respect, you know, for anything that could happen, and, you know, you just uh, try to avoid all problems. He's very risk-aversive until he saw, this is the only way I'm going to win is shooting, and then he would shoot a bank or do whatever he had to to get him to win. and shoot the one, come down to the end rail probably for that ball that's straggling. You don't want to go out of your way to get that ball that's straggling on the back rail, but when you see you're on a ball and you got a chance to get there, you know, then you just go there. And that helped my straight pool game a lot because, you know, if you're sitting there wondering, playing position to see how you get to the end rail, you know, there's one more thing to worry about. If you just fall on a shot that you can get to it, go ahead and take it. Right, right. Here you want to get straight or below it the way he did because if you come too far below, you can always go to rail. You can always roll up a little further. But if he would have went too far coming back toward the object ball, you know, the three rails is terrible. So you right. don't want to come straight on the ball or a little bit inside of it the way he did. If you end up a lot inside of it, you just go to the short rail and back to the center of the table. This ball is a little bit high, you know, next to the rack. So what he's going to do is go into the top two balls. You don't want to hit the far ball, you know, the, the red ball, 
right. on this shot. You want to hit the closest ball because you move the most balls in the rack. And you want to hit this with center right-hand English and just slide off the rack back to the center of the table. Sort of like a stun shot. Or you can force follow it <laughs> and crash it. <laughs> <laughs> People ask Thorstone, you know, when he's hanging around New York, like, why did you hit the brake shot so hard? And he says, I can play either style, but when I pick him off, you know, hit the brake shot softer, he goes, I don't run as many balls. Right. <laughs> you know, so, you know, that's why he hits the rack the way he does, the occasional mishap of the ball scratching in the side. Since I've been trying to hit the brake shot hard because what the heck, you got to go with, you know, with what's working. Uh, I've since scratched in places that I've never scratched before. Like I hit the side of the rack and drawn directly into the close side on the, you know, on the brake shot side, you know, just without going to the rail. You know, so there's certain scratches that come up when you hit them like that that never were involved in the game before the way I played it. But I think it's well worth you know, the risk. And again, the, you know, straight pull brake shots are hard for beginners, and now when you're trying to hit them at high speeds, just remember, hit it as hard as you can control. Never hit the ball harder than, you know, what you feel comfortable with. and draw back, hit the rail, bounce off a little bit. Remember, when you're going toward the rail, always to the rail and off. I like shooting the ball in the side and staying on top of them. If you shoot the lower ball below the rack, you got to jack up and get back on top of them anyway, so you might as well you know, stay there now. It was a little tricky because he didn't want to make sure he gets by it and doesn't jack himself up. The ball in the center of the table and he got by it. He would like to get a little further. He might try to get straight on this ball on the rail so he can break off one of the balls near the cluster or the 13 if nothing else goes. Looks like that ball next to the cluster might have half a pocket. Again, the score is 105 to 21. And, you know, the way Thorson's shooting, you wouldn't know that he's the one behind. <laughs> Shot jacked up in the corner pocket. Great, great speed. He had a good pocket speed. Not too slow, not too fast. If he would have touched the rail, it still would have went in. And he's shooting off one of the brake shots, but he, he's got a couple out there. Might have another plan. You know, sometimes you got to shoot the brake shot off, but... Um, a guy like Dallas would never shoot that brake shot. He'd say, whatever you do, don't shoot that 10 ball, or, you know, whatever the <laughs> ball was laying there. But uh, that other ball near the rack must be out to 12. If you got two, you can go ahead and shoot one. He's got a little angle. He might knock it a little further away from the rack. And he's got protection with the 13. He's got the ball in the center of the table like Earl had that you can get just about anywhere. Play position for four pockets, depending on how you fall in the 13. He decided yeah. not to move the ball over anymore because he didn't want to get jacked up on the 13. You're seeing a more careful Thorsten right here. See if he gets straight on this ball. You know, like I said, he'll come up a little short, if anything. 
Um, see how he's going to check his angle to see exactly where he wants to be on this break shot. And you want to get exactly where you want to go forward just a hair, roll it in. You know, that little extra distance, you know, doesn't hurt him at all. I think he'll hit the break shot warp speed anywhere, you know, around where the kitchen is. Once he starts getting in the kitchen, he might take a little something off it. But see how I say this ball is a little close to the snack. And uh, when you're close to the pack, again, you get a straighter angle the way he has. He'll try to draw back to the center of the table or possibly just crash it back to the end rail. You know, he had to draw on the ball. The reason it went forward is because he hit the ball in the rack on the low side and the ball went forward, but he still had enough ball to go, enough draw to go to the side rail. Right. If he would have hit it a little softer, you know, we end up hitting that shot and going in the corner pocket. Notice how that's the only shot I think in pool that you don't put your head over the stick. Uh, you know, you, you can get, you hit that shot so much, you learn the angle reaching over the side and straight pool because when you're practicing, you don't want to get the bridge out for every shot. That's about the only shot you, you don't get the break shot out for. I mean the bridge. Snap the ball, slight draw. And you must like the combination here. Yeah. Shoot the combination. You still got to get position. He's got that ball on the side rail. The only sure position if you draw back for that. He's, he's stunning through. Play position for the, the next object ball. Yep, I knew that was a little tricky. Uh, draw back probably would have been better. Make sure you get that ball on a side rail. He tried to do too much all at once. Now he's got to look for some kind of safety. Or Earl left the table on a, on a miss. If he was, if he would have scratched the cue ball, uh, Thorsten would just have to tap the cue ball because Earl would be on the first scratch. Always got to keep in mind if your opponent's on a scratch, and these are the times to try to remember when you're in spots like this. He's looking at safe just to go one rail and put him behind the seven ball and probably the low side of the seven ball so you don't leave the ball in the corner. He almost has a shot in the side pocket here. I think he's calling one. He called the bank cross yep. side. Yep. He shot a bank on me in Maryland cross side and didn't even slow down, but jacked up. Uh, this is a very difficult shot. Different ball game. Oh, what a great shot. Absolutely. What a great shot. And that's what I'm saying, the all around pool the players are playing these days with banks in one pocket and, you know, Allows you to feel comfortable, a lot more comfortable in shots like that than uh, the guys that didn't play the other other games. Every game helps. One pocket will help your safety play, and you know banks. Of course, you know that goes without saying. If you can make a bank, you got more options. But Shoot at shots if you're just starting out. Shoot at a lot of shots because you never know what you're capable of if you don't shoot at shots. Another thing players don't do in straight pull is shoot dead, dead balls, kiss shots, carom shots. You know, if you never shoot at them, you'll never get a feel for them. Rolling in the corner. You favor the side rail a little bit. Your speed's got to be good. What a great shot. Now 
this point, Earl's got to start getting ready, you know, mentally prepared that if he does get a shot, he's going to put some damage on this guy because uh, you might not get too many shots from here on in for the rest of the match. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you can expect a couple, you know, so, you know, you got to be ready to shoot. These balls are still tied up. He's going to shoot the four ball cluster. Remember, your four ball cluster, it's not a full rack. You don't have to break them as hard as you think. And uh, he's got the 11 or the three ball. Sort of in between both shots, can't really break up the two middle balls, which seem to be the four and the five. Now he's looking to see, like, if he moves the three, four goes. Then he's got to get just right at 11. You know, he might go for the 11 in the side, or he might try to get the four goals in the corner once you move the three. Came back for the 11, played it safe, shoot the 11, shoot the four. You know, he's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I think this fellow can play. What was his name again? Yeah. I didn't, uh, um, to to Torsten. 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 Toasty. Yeah, this game's pretty toasty, man. You know, my heroes growing up were, you know, of course, Dallas West, Siegel, Miserac, guys like that. You know, I appreciated Alan Hopkins and DiLiberto and Jim Rempe. You know, it was fun to watch. You know, Thorson is definitely a guy that uh, younger players should be watching and admiring because his game is real tight. Good, he went to the rail. He should have played off the rail. He was trying to hold it up. There you have it, folks. And those spectators on the side rail appreciating Thorsten's run. And they're uh, rooting for him all the way. Brings a score to 105 to 49. Upstate, Al, are you ever anywhere where you're downstate, Al? <laughs> I'm downstate hey, quite often. Uh, Believe me, we're thinking about selling the house and coming back down. You know, we're originally from City Island down here in New York, and uh, we're up there about 12, 13 years now, about 225 miles northwest of the city. And uh, I've been coming down quite often. We're thinking about selling and moving somewhere into Westchester County. Uh, that's great. Great, great that, shot. Wow. How oh, beautiful, that speed off the rail. You know, who's got that much confidence? And he got back to the center of the table with shots. Yeah, Upstate Al has done a lot for pool in the Northeast, and he works tirelessly at promoting. Heard nice things. Sometimes, you know, you don't want to talk when these guys are playing, you know. He's, right. just, he's like an artist at work here. You know, he's creating the, the patterns, you know, moving the balls. Uh, you know, just the stuff that he's been doing, you know, is beautiful to watch. And, uh, you know, sometimes words don't need to be spoken. And, uh, you know, he's going to, like, nudge a ball or, you know, come back uh, two inches and, you know, nudge another ball and, Keep it in keep it in the area for the break shot. Looks like he's got half a pocket on the six ball. When you're shooting half pocket shots, you newer players out there, you just want to aim for the half of the pocket that's open. Forget the other object ball even exists. You know, so you got to get that object ball that's blocking the pocket out of your mind. And our tendency is to hit the ball in the center of the pocket. And a lot of times you'll run into that ball because you're just used to hitting the ball in the center of the pocket. Uh, you got to use all parts of your pocket to be a great position player. You know, they're cutting up the pocket on many shots decides what happens with the cue ball. The only time you don't cheat the pockets is when you're shooting long shots because, you know, 
cheating the pocket on a long shot won't get you much in terms of where your cue ball is going. Um, so there's no reason to. He's got a couple balls on the side rails he needs to get rid of. Getting a, a bad sign for Earl is getting a little bit more of that tradition, that Torsten rhythm, that march around the table. And what you can see from this monitor is um, Torsten very rarely takes his eyes off the table as he's marching around. You might think that the ball's going to melt. He's certainly concentrated. Yeah, he's not your traditional stand back, line up on the shot, and shoot it. He tends to move into the shot. And I think, uh, you know, that's a great point. You know, I'm glad you said that because you woke me up over here. Um, I've been watching the way he walks around the table, and he's got his eye on the ball while he's walking. And I think that's how he sights the ball. He's getting the same look at the ball all the time. By doing it, it's a little different than what, you know, most people are taught how to line up on a shot, step back, keep the stick in front of you, get the right distance. You know, it seems like he's just stalking the balls. Okay, by the way, we're panning over to uh, next table, table 10, where DeShane is, uh, as of last track, was 110 to uh, to make his two. And uh, it doesn't look like DeShane is slowing up. Uh, there's your... Your prototype scrambler over there, Mike DeShane, I'll tell you that, the way he plays straight ball. <laughs> he just shoots balls in. Uh, that's Mike, Mike DeShane. You see him on your screen right now. Stalking the table. This kid can fire balls in at 100 miles an hour, and somehow they go. I don't get that. You know, but, uh, you know, his patterns aren't traditional. But, you know, he pockets balls so well, and he scrambles so well that he runs hundreds. Uh, this is a shot where Thorson can power and finally he's got like one that's laying for a power shot. Okay. And it's going to scratch okay. in the corner. Yeah, that's so we're watching him. He was practicing before and we've seen him so many times draw up to the head rail and come on back down. And sometimes that top pocket will suck it up. And there it was. And that's the one weakness I could say about his straight pull game. As sometimes when you hit the balls that hard, that does happen. That one straight in the side pocket, straight off the rack in the corner pocket. You know, those are shots that are only there when you hit the ball at that speed. Girls back at the table. That was huge. That first shot, we talked about it earlier, mm -hmm. Gene. You jump up there, and he almost got behind the one, which would have been death. He's just lucky right. he's got the nine. Like I said, and, you know, for always getting a couple rolls like that where, you know, he falls into a shot, he's going to run a lot of balls. He's been in the chair for a little while now. We'll see how he reacts. combination is his next shot yes yeah it's um it looks to be on pretty well these shots aren't dead they're on you know if you hit them in the right spot they go you know a dead ball is something that you can't possibly miss if you hit the ball in front of it very few combinations are really dead you could usually throw them off so you know there's always some thinking that goes into a combination Okay, current score of the DeShane match, 124, Emin and two. And uh, DeShane still rolling. Shooting a break shot here. I 
And the shave will probably go from Thorson's book, hit it hard, and I wonder if he'll draw it into the corner pocket. Oh. Well, he sort of half stroked it, and he was mm -hmm. probably saw Thorsten drawn into the corner. <laughs> and he was thinking, I better not do that. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes pool players get funny thoughts in their head. You know, and, uh, you know, you got to, like I said, make up your mind before you get down there and shoot. Might have had a 100 ball run on the other table. He was shooting for a while, and if Mika's yeah. only got two, right. I guarantee you he had a high run. Earl has a break shot. He's got a seven ball for key ball. He's got possible one ball to get on, on the key ball. At some point, he's just got to get straight in on this five ball. You know, then he could stop and shoot the one or the seven. You know, there's a couple ways to go. The only bad ball here is the five ball. When you have bad balls, you want to get on them as soon as possible. So if you don't get on it, you got a second chance to get where you want to get. was drawn back for the five ball there and came up a little short. You know, but again, you got another chance to get at him. You could shoot the one in the corner, go three rails, and leave it on the rail. This was a shot Earl missed earlier where he was trying to go three rails and draw it in the corner. If he makes this, I, I bet the cue ball ends up right on the rail. Yeah, still a little strong. Trying to get a little too close there. But uh, you can roll this in and get perfect on the seven ball. It's not bad. Girl's good. You want to get straight on that one because you have to follow up a little further than your normal shot. And you got just right. Again, he was trying to hit the rail and come out a little bit more. But, um, you know, that, that works. Earl's at 119, it's 31 balls away, which is two racks plus three balls. Uh, Thorson's sitting at 62, you know, he still needs uh, close to 90 balls, 88 balls to win. Uh, this break shot is critical. You know, it's a real important shot for Earl, whether or not he shoots it, gets a shot. Remember when Thorson had the shot on the rail, he just rifled it in the corner, bounced off the rack and stayed in the center of the table. You know, Earl's going to have to do the same thing to guarantee shots. There he did. Yeah. Very nicely done. Yep. You, know, you can't be tentative when you're playing a, a Thorsten Holman. You know, the only way you're going to beat him is to run balls and, you know, hope a few things like that scratch happened to him. Wow, Thorsten hasn't missed any balls that I remember. He missed the uh, position. He had to play safe or, you know, but, you know, and then he shot a break shot and scratched. So both players are playing pretty well. Oh. 
in our earlier talks about the best guy in the world rolling up a rail. <laughs> it's, it's so tough out there. Okay. So Homan back at the table. Earl can't believe that ball didn't go in. I thought he made it too, but from our angle, it's hard to see. Mika's finally at a pool table over there with a tough shot. There's Thorson back at the table. You left him an easy shot to get going right back into his rhythm. As the Germans would say, go, go Thorson. <laughs> said earlier that good player coming to the table that first rack a lot of times it's hard to get through that first rack if they get through the first rack they're usually okay get on a break shot get to the next break shot is very important Okay, there's the triangle. Yeah, just stop. Go to the side pocket, get on the side pocket straight, stay below it a little bit, if anything. But um, when you're hitting them good, you get directly on these balls in the side pocket. But that's how you know the guy's hitting them good, too, another tell point. And once again, Thorson's careful, walks to the other side of the table, sees exactly how far he's got to draw back to get where he wants to get on the break shot. And again, when you notice when the ball's closer to the rack, he's getting a little straighter on the break shot. It's not that big angle, that thin cut shot where you're breaking up the rack with force. Uh, it's, it's hard to see those angles when uh, that edge of the ball when a full rack is blocking your view when you're down on the shot. See if he draws it this hard. Right, that's yeah. Okay, nothing daunted, but it went to the center of the table, up to the name plate and back. Is it gonna stick? That's another Thorsten safety shot. You know, <laughs> you know that's another bad mishap that only happens when you hit the ball and break shots like Thorsten. You know, so the percentage of it, of it is probably one out of. 10 times, 1 out of 20 times, and you've, you've okay. seen almost twice where bad things happen to him. But he knows to stick with it. You know, he knows enough to stick with it. That's what works. Try to roll to the rail here and come up. It was just those two balls in the center that need to be opened up. And he didn't waste any time getting at them. A slight little nudge. You got protection. You know, you go a little too far, you shoot the ball to the side. You got to get in a seven ball on the rail. Right, that's the one I was looking at. You know, you want to get on it after you can just, like, stop the ball. Because if you get straight in on it, you can't do nothing but stop, follow a little bit. And your best way to make the ball is just stop it. So if he moves a few balls and he has a shot that he can fall on, you know, it's a little easier. And he's in the middle working around the rack. Again, he sees the seven ball now. There's a possible opportunity, you know, to get there. 
straight pool players, you know, they can, you know, get on that ball on the rail just from a lot of different spots. You, know, you could draw straight over, you know, to the ball. You can go two rails, one rail, but, you know, they have a speed to the rail is very important. This ball, if he's following, he's going to drop down to the low rail. You know, where you can go up table, cut the ball and go up table. Uh, he got a little straight, but he wasn't trying to stop. That time he was trying to stop on the rail so you can just slide back to the center of the table. He got a little straight, so he's going to have to work from the center and possibly draw back, you know, by the one ball or follow back there. You know, he was able to, he was able to spin up table. He got below it just enough. There's Ralph Eckert and Mika Eminem and uh, another table, and, you know, great players in, in their own right. Sorry you guys can't watch them all. <laughs> He's going to move you the seven that's right, right here. Or I not, well, he was trying to bump into the edge of the seven, you know, and he missed the edge. You know, now you almost have to cut it otherwise. Otherwise, you're going to shoot this ball in the corner and go, th you know, two rails to get in the seven ball. I don't think it's worth it. And I think you just got to shoot the ball and go cross table. Now, this is the type of shot that is missable, you know, so he's, he's going to be careful. He hits it, I expect him to rather than try to hold it up to go cross table to two rails. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, he, he went one rail across, which makes that a tough shot. That's why he slowed down on it. I think you can see the one. You know, the four is a little high, but it's a possible break shot, too. You got the five ball. You know, this is a variation of the triangle also. You got the five ball that you can break off the side pocket or the corner. You know, so where you... Those little angles that you fall on these shots are what you shoot like. You might shoot the five ball here. Draw into the four and not nudge it a little better. Or just stop it and don't worry about it at this point. You know, why fool around and try to bump a ball and get funny? You know, so you just take a little higher break shot, come to the center of the table, one rail. And then one rail shot, you want to get at least by the side pocket. You want to hit a little harder. Don't try to get too close to the ball. Because you know, sometimes you end up getting too straight. Earl's racking the ball, but now forcing all of a sudden he's got 84 balls. Again, this one's a little high. You want to hit the closest ball first. If he can hit that closest ball, he'll hit it hard. If not, he'll hit it soft to hit that closest ball. Yeah, he hit the closest <laughs> ball. Good speed. Came across the table. Looks like he's got a ball in the side pocket right. or a cut shot in the corner going back into the stack. If you shoot that cut shot in the corner, you're going into the stack. If you hit the 13, you could hit the four ball and scratch in the corner pocket. You know, so he might not shoot that shot because he sees that possibility. You know, so he won't even bother. You know, shoot the ball on the side, stay above him. You know, you might go into with the six. You don't want to shoot the break ball. You got a break ball on the 11 ball, you know, usually. But this early in the rack, you can shoot it. You got other balls to manipulate into break shots. There's so, so many in that cluster that when you move them, you'll probably move another ball into position. So that's the only time I recommend shooting a break shot, you know, sometime like that when, when you got a plan. If you don't have a plan, leave it there. You'll be better suited.
He's got a little bit straight on this ball. You know, that makes it a little tough because you're going to be shooting off the rail. Uh, drop down in that 13 ball. You know, roll into the 8 ball. You knock it out for a break shot. You know, but when you're on the rail, you can't do a lot with the cue ball to manipulate it going higher or lower. You can only hit the cue ball high. So now it's very important to get the exact angle you want, you know, to roll that 13 in. I think he got a little straight, so he's just going to roll it in and play for the 12. He's not going to bother to bump any balls out here. Well, he was able to see the 9 ball. Uh, again, you stay inside the ball, go up to the center of the table. Got a little bit too far inside. You know, he might have to come around three rails to get back on his 13 ball. I don't like getting above him here and shooting the 6. Uh, because all you're going to do is go into the 8 ball and not really do much damage there. Oh, he was able to dig into it and go into the red. And Thorsten was able to dig into the get into the rack there. Went to a tough shot in the corner pocket. I got it, I got it. Fourteen's gotta go. Either that or the six ball. Looks like a combination, possibly. I don't know what he's looking at. The one three or fourteen one. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah, he's shooting the six ball, rolling it into the eight ball, and playing position for the eight or the thirteen. This is one you don't hit hard. You might miss the balls and go around them. At the slow speed, you you don't carry him off the ball as far, so he didn't run into the eight ball. Knowing what speed to hit a ball when you're cutting it has a lot to do with the angle, the initial angle of contact. You know, people know where the ball ends up a lot of times, but they don't know the exact tra trajectory it takes after it kisses the ball at this speed with the draw, with a follow. You know, and the great players, you know, I first took note of that watching that from Reyes. You know, the way he would just manipulate the cue ball with speed and, the, <laughs> you know, draw and follow. Kind of look. Thorsten's still looking for a break shot here. All right. You got to get in the one ball so you can bump out to 14. You know, that was much safer. He had an angle to go into it there. Used the one ball as protection. So even with three balls on the table, you know, he was able to get into a position where he had uh, protection on a little break shot there. So Mickey making progress on that table up to 44 at last track. Uh, there's another guy that can be down 100 balls, and <laughs> you don't know if he's winning or losing. Tough shot with the bridge. You're going to follow. See how you have your four pockets? He played for the corner pocket this time. You know, if you get straight in, you just got to stop your ball, and you're right there on the break shot. Here we see Mika. He just manufactured a break shot. Beautiful player, great, great touch, great stroke. Okay, he's been real close a bunch of times and winning this World Straight Bowl. He's won other world titles and he's come close in the World Straight Bowl a few times. Yeah, I think he's been. I know he was second in in 2009 to Cohen, 
And uh, I think he's been second another time. Yeah, I'd have to say he's currently he's the best player not to win a World Straight Pool title. Agreed. Here again, this break shot is a little high. You know, you want to go into the nine ball to get the proper break shot. So he's going to end up either hitting a little slower to hit the nine or just sliding off the nine. Yeah, he hit the opposite side of the rack. He didn't quite open up as good as he would expect. So he hit the far ball, and that's why even at that warp speed, he didn't get as much opening as he did. But he hit it hard enough where he's still got shots. Wasted no time going after him. Cue ball kind of close to the side pocket. Uh, he's froze on the rail. He's got a cut shot combination in the side, a cut shot with the 10 ball in the side, a shot in the corner pocket. Looks like it might be. <laughs> he basically busted him wide open is what he did. I mean. Half a pocket. Whenever you're on the rail, though, you're looking for something simple. I only saw that one pattern, what we call uh, the Torsten Holman break, and he almost locked up against another ball. He actually drew all the way up table and back down towards the spot. He wound up escaping, and right now it looks like he's escaping as early as at 125, and Torsten Holman at 98. This is anybody's game from here. Yeah. Tom Carabasos in the booth filling you guys in has a lot of knowledge. I hope you guys are appreciating this. We appreciate him sitting in the booth. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Al. Yeah, I, I love watching these these guys play. You know, they're both great players. And, uh, you know, Earl's starting to like straight pool. He loves the game. And, you know, but Thorson's the guy to watch these days. Yeah, he snapped it off three times, 2006, 2011, and the last year, 2013. I'm just trying to keep you updated on the Mika and Mike DeShane. It's 124 to 58, Mike DeShane on that table. Yeah, Mika was recently at two balls. He's been he's on a good run. Worse than shooting the side pocket. I'll tell you one thing, you know, Thorsten has got to be thinking run out here. You can't, Oh yeah. you know, 25 balls, you can't expect to get another shot, you know, with a guy like Earl's caliber in the seat. Yeah, no room for errors from here. I mean, from any point, let's put it that way. But this is uh, getting a little more scary towards the, the end as uh, Gene Mann is walking back in um, after feeding the meters. So we're going to hand the mic over to him in a couple of seconds. Kind of a nice shot. He didn't have his exact angle on the one ball. He shot that ball in the corner and was able to get exactly where he wants. You know, he's going to shoot the ball in the side, two ball, come back, shoot the seven, stop, and then shoot the six ball and go two rails for position and the eight ball is what I'm thinking. Um, I got tired of trying to call the key balls with you guys because I don't stream this enough and I don't have the experience enough to to see the patterns that you see, of course. Uh, so I'm you know, probably it was, it was very fortunate. one for ten. I was very fortunate. I went out to Rockford and would play with Dallas West once a week for three years. This guy ran so many hundreds on me, and I I don't remember a week where he didn't run a hundred balls, right, you know, or more. You know, so you get to see a the patterns of a great player like that and you know it just gets ingrained in your thought process you know when Dallas looks at a table he sees the pattern in different ways you know. I mean not he doesn't only see one pattern he probably sees numerous patterns and yeah, he thinks of himself as an artist on the pool table and he's creating I have to agree here's the two rail shapes he's got a nice angle on the eight he can definitely go after an eight and hit it whatever speed he's comfortable with. 
And again, shoot only as hard as you feel comfortable with. Updated score. Thorsten's over 100 balls, or he's at 112. Just a quick peek to the other side of the table. That one is 124 for Mike DeShane, and now Mika Eminen has 72. And he's working. Yeah, and still up at the table as we're going to watch Thorsten Holman's break shot. This is his pattern break shot, I would say, right? Yeah, he's going to go after this, hit it hard. There's no sense changing now. See how close he came to scratching? <laughs> but he knows, you know, there's only two feet of pocket on the table. You know, if you figure, you know, four inches times six, 24 inches, you know, two and a half <laughs> feet, something like that. These the are four and a half inch pockets. <laughs> you know, the square footage, you know, you're at a certain, you know, there's it's more amazing. chance you're going to hit the rail than a pocket. You know what I find amazing, Tom? And I'm not only talking about straight pull, nine ball, any. You could whack that cue ball around and, you know, let the cue ball loose, and somehow it finds a pocket to scratch. You take a nine ball and miss it, but whack it hard enough to go around the table five, six rails, and that nine ball doesn't find a hole if you're just playing luck nine ball. No, and it's there, amazing. <laughs> there's one funny thing about nine ball. Like, when you're trying to carry them the nine ball, you're going in behind a ball that's on the rail, and the nine ball's sitting in the corner. You hit behind the ball, trying to carry them the nine, and you never never make the nine right right exactly but if the nine ain't there you scratch every time so i don't <laughs> understand why Amazing. that happens you know, i think this is what keeps us keeps <laughs> us interested <laughs> it's an amazing game okay so i uh took a little break and uh but torsten didn't <laughs> no torsten is still uh firing away over here and nothing earl can do but just saying that Freeze the seat and keep that elbow warm. I, again, it's just uh, mind-boggling how the guy can be down 100 balls, you know, and, and look like he's winning when he gets hit the table. Right. You know, it's just, you know. Cool, calm, and collective. Such discipline. Yeah. And also, what an amazing place in the world we are right now because there's two adjacent tables. Um, as we, we guys were talking about, Mika. And I, uh, I just stepped out to uh, keep the Department of Transportation happy, and it's 30 more points on the ball for Mika, board for Mika. Yeah, 124 to 72, and Mika is still at the table. Yeah, another guy that you don't know he's down 100 balls. You know, he just gets up there 124 to 2, and, you know, he's a threat to win the game. Well, you too, Tom. You could do that also. And, Gene, I'm pretty sure you have a one in ten shot of trying it, right? <laughs> well, it <laughs> Me, did, myself, I'm a zero, so it, don't it, feel it, bad. Okay. Well, my ability to win games is depends on how many pillows are on the bed. Yeah, and a good day. <laughs> and, when, and when I wake up. And a good day I've run out. You know, I have uh, played in Maryland. I started to catch a gear. And uh, Dave Day, I needed two balls. I ran 49 and out. That's nice. Sean Wilkie I'm ran sure he was happy. 80 balls. And my next turn at the table, I ran 69 and out. You know, What's your high run? Officially, it's, you know, being witness. With, I was practicing with Dallas West during that U.S. Open where he finished second at Siegel. And uh, Steve Miserak was watching. And I was running balls. And Dallas was like, are you ever going to? You're playing really good, Tommy. You're on a big run. And, I, you know, I was... Right at around 204 balls, and Miserat goes, what's the matter, Tommy? Aren't you ever going to miss? I missed the next shot. Yeah, isn't that how <laughs> it is? Miserat started they laughing. Gotcha. And he, thought he, was, he thought it was hilarious. <laughs> you know, so that's officially my high run. Practicing, I, that's good. I, I okay. ran 20 racks. It was about 280. But that was, I can't, to be honest with you, I can't remember if I missed one time in the 20 racks. You know, it might have been. Some when you're practicing, you're not, I wasn't expecting a, a big run and really, I don't start a rack over when I miss. I shoot from where the balls are laying because then that's more what you're going to see in a match. Like if Thorsten misses, you don't get right. to set up a break shot and right. start shooting. Right. In know, other you, words, you're playing uh, two roles. You're playing yourself and your opponent. 
exactly. bipolar. So I had at least 200 ball runs there. That's good, and a lot of people don't run 100 in their lifetime. So that's okay. a nice run. Yes. All right, Gene, what do you got? Well, just updating. So Torsten marches around the table. Meanwhile, uh, the table has changed hands on number 10. Uh, DeShane is back at the table, um, needing 26 balls. And again, that ball in the corner, you could have gone straight at it. You know, you would have had to follow up. It looks like he can follow to the rail, come back to the center table. He's just going to draw to the side rail and come across. You know, looks like mm -hmm. a follow with a little inside English. Yeah, he's following. And he's going to, he didn't have that inside English. He's getting a little straight. You know, Earl's checking out <laughs> to see how straight. We got a new leader, 126 to 125. Uh, another thing, that if you're not a seasoned player, a lot of times when you make a comeback like this, you stop working as hard as you were, you know, because you, you have that automatic let up, oh, oh, I'm back in the match, I was way down, I'm back in, you know, and then you get a little let up, you know, but, uh, you know, a guy like Thorsten, he knows better. 126, 125. Yeah. Right. He's a little straight. You know, Sailor from Racine just showed me the shot. He says you stun it through with a little, you know, stun shot into the rack and try to bounce off the rack. And that's exactly what Thorsten did. But he stunned yeah. it with below center. Right. So he can come back. This is uh, this is the shot here. You know, right away he's looking for a dead ball. You know, if you got a dead ball and you can recognize it, you know, you know, a lot of players fail to look at the rack. They see that long shot. They say, ah, I guess you that long shot. But I always check the rack. This way you, uh, you do what I've been saying repeatedly. You know, keep yourself, make up your mind what you're going to do before you get down and shoot in a shot. He's shooting a combo. Looks like the 12 ball. Yeah. And you got to watch your cue ball. You can't just shoot a combo and just follow it into the corner pocket here. You know, that's what makes this combo tough. It's an off angle, and you got to draw the ball. You're going into the nine or into the side rail. You know, complicates it. Mike DeShane is back at the table, M Mika missed, but he's probably sitting at 80 balls. And Mike needs 26 balls, and you know, let's see if he can run out here. A little inside English, come across. If he's too straight, you got to draw back to the rail and out. If not, if you got a little angle, you might be able to just stun it over. Then Thorson's getting ready to shoot this... Uh, off angle combination. This is the shot of the match. That's most right. I mo most definitely right here. He did what I told him not to. Oh, okay. You can't just shoot it and roll into the corner. When are these players going to learn to listen to the announcers? Oh my God, I'm telling you. Well, I thought he, you know, he was going to jack up and draw that. I was trying to coach him. You know, Tom, that just goes back to what we were just talking about. You have so many balls on the table. Somehow that cue ball finds the pocket. Finds the pocket. You know, he probably didn't even see it. The angle just coming off slid slightly forward and created the an angle directly a beeline to half a pocket. I guarantee you there wasn't a lot of room there. Otherwise, he would have tried a lot harder to avoid that. Lifetime membership. Those pockets have been there forever. <laughs> Al said he's got a membership to the Scratch Club. The unbelievable Scratch Hat. That's the, that's the elite club. I can't believe that one, Scratch. Say, my scone, I used to see all those kisses and the Scratch coming. 
and then wouldn't do it. <laughs> I'm sure he did. Himself, but he's yes. Okay. <laughs> if he would have gotten straight on that five, you know, you know we're, usually you don't freeze on a five where both balls are parallel to cross the table. But if he would have came back a little bit, he would have been stuck on both balls. That's right. Shots. That's. I mean, I watch me. I'll do that shot. I'll get stuck on both balls. Yeah, you make it look easy. I heard. <laughs> I make looking stuck get easy. <laughs> Dragon Promotions. All our sponsors. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're getting to see some great pool that is, tends to be a dying art. There's two major straight pool tournaments a year. Earl says there should be 30. a big shot. Yeah. He's going into the rack slightly. Where is it going to fall? He's okay. Yeah, he is. Well, let's write this down. Carabazzo said this is the shot of the match. <laughs> I think we can have, uh, we can knit some samplers or whatever you do, embroider samplers that say that because I think it was. Yeah, some chance you just tend to remember, you know, for all time. You, you know, Thorsten doesn't win here. He'll remember that scratch more vividly. Uh, again, I don't remember Thorsten missing a ball. He, you know, he scratched a couple no, times. No, and he got was, out of shape and he was had forced a safe, to play right. safe. But there was no no missed balls. So Earl with a couple rolls can beat a guy that never misses. That didn't miss. And like I said before the match, three to six shooting innings is what you can expect and you gotta take advantage of them. Just gonna shoot the four, play position on three, and then roll up one rail for the break shot. And just stop the ball here. Well, he's following to get there. He had a little angle on it, and he's sort of on the wrong side of the ball. You would have liked to be a little bit inside to go one rail. He's looking in and he's saying, "I'm straight in." Plus, um, you're here in the background. Deshane's out. Pete's imminent. The other thing Earl can do here is just draw back the cue ball into the stack. It's very simple to do when you get ball in hand behind the head, uh, behind the head. Thing. Yeah, I, I wonder why uh, he was close enough where he was able to go two rails and create an angle. He cheated the pocket a little bit. You know, he hit it, he hit it perfect. Siegel, I'm Siegel. <laughs> Strickland's at 139. Needs 11 balls. Earl's talking himself, but he's got a great angle on this break shot, and all he needs to do is hit it and be in the clear. But any time you shoot a break shot, you know, things can happen. Uh, looks like he's going to have to follow this break shot. You know, he's going to follow forward, and you now he's drawing at a high speed. Let's see, oh. Whoa! I told you, as much speed as you control. And now he got a little bit of a break. He left him forced in long distance. 
but uh, you know you gotta you gotta be prepared and make up your mind how hard you're gonna shoot that shot, exactly what you're gonna do. Because if you let up on your speed a little bit, you know the ball won't go in the hole. It's gotta be what you decided before you hit. I call that a let up stroke, where you let up slightly and you tend to overcut it when you let up on it. And everybody in the stands is getting a little bit excited here. <laughs> All right. So this is uh, going to be Torsten's last turn at the table one way or the other. And that first shot, you got to be prepared yeah. for it. Right. Thorsten wins because he usually is. Only thing I would say Thorson doesn't have in his favor is the fact that he has <laughs> missed. You know, it's just so hard to be, <laughs> you know, that perfect, you know. There's a lot of pressure to close out a match. It's a little different, you know, when it comes crunch time and you're ready to close and, you know, the guy's right there. You know, this is not going to be easy 24 ball run. He might make it look easy, but believe me, it's not easy. One time I was in Rockford, and every time Dallas got up, he ran 60, 70 balls, 100 balls. I'd get up, I'd run three, seven, eight. And I'm not talking racks, I'm talking balls. <laughs> right. you, know, and, uh, you know, it was so brutal, you know. <laughs> By the end of three hours of this, I never run in a rack, and the guy's... <laughs> Just keeping me in the chair. There's Earl talking to the stands over there. He's going a little batty. But uh, Dallas looked over at me and saw I was upset. He said, Tommy, I never told you it was easy. You know, a good player makes it look easy. But uh, it's tough out there. He touched the rack a little bit. That's a slight mistake, I think. I don't. I don't think it's mortal, but yeah, I was wasn't expecting to see him contact the ball. He's looking at a combination there. You know, he's not shy about shooting a dead ball. You know, if the ball is on and he can make it, you know, he'll, he'll shoot it. But uh, I prefer if he got this ball in the corner off the rail. But if you're going to shoot the combo, you don't want to move that ball because that might be the only ball you shoot at after the combo. Okay, so I don't know. We may have missed this on the call, Tom, but uh, at some point in this match, Earl removed the cotton from his ears. And uh, maybe that's got something to do with the outcome of his game. Oh, what was he thinking? If you have a strategy going in, stick to it. Unless it ain't working. <laughs> if it ain't working, <laughs> don't go down like that. Change something. That's another thing that's uh, important. You know, good players tell me if you if you're playing safe and it ain't working, start shooting in your hole. You know. can't believe he missed the break shot. You know, he's made so many tough shots in his life. You, you just, you know, underestimate something that's a little simpler. That's, that's what makes straight pull such a tough game. You know, keeping, keeping your concentration on this, on the simpler shots and those in-between shots, you know, because anytime you're trying to play position or you're breaking the balls, it makes it a complicated shot. 
I don't care how easy that break shot look. It's it's complicated. You're trying to draw back length of the table, you're trying to draw to the side rail. You're trying to follow through. You're trying to get another shot, and it's so easy to you know take your eye off the ball. Again, Sailor says you never take your eye off the ball. You know, there's usually something else going on there. He goes, what, you're looking at some pretty girl in the stands? Take your eye off the ball? I don't believe in that. You know, you did something, and if you can, if you know what you did when you miss, you know, that's how you learn. You got to know why you miss the ball. You know, if you're shooting balls and you're missing and you have no idea what happened, it's trouble. Again, here we go. Forcing on this ball on the rail. You want to get rid of the ball on the rail. He still's got that one in the back. But notice how he's not going out of his way to get on that ball. He knows that somewhere during this run he's going to get a nice angle to get on the six ball, I believe, that's on the rail. Like this ball on the side, if he had the correct angle, he would roll up to that the six ball. If he doesn't, he stops the ball, picks something else up. But right at this point is when you should slow down and you should know exactly how you're running these last four or five balls on the table. Make sure you get your angles. This way you're not taking a chance falling on the break shot. Yep, he got the, just the right angle. He was able to go forward on the six, leave himself an angle where he can get off the rail. Uh, again, you can hit this with good speed, you know, going down the rail and get to the center of the table. Should have shots. He was trying to draw for the side pocket or these balls in the corner. Uh, the three must be out of the rack. It's a little hard to see the line of the rack from here, but the way he's uh, playing this, you know, the three ball goes. Otherwise, he'd shoot this ball on the side, get in a spot where he can knock it out of the rack. Draw to the side rail. He followed. Notice how he left an angle where he can go up table if he has right. to and back to the center. There's two things you can do. You can stroke it with a draw. If you got a nice touch, you just slide over. Again, it's close to the rack, so you don't want to slide over too far. You might just roll this in. You know, he did the slide over shot. When you lay good on that ball on the side, a lot of times you want that angle to slide over on a break shot. It's very common. Okay, 139, 139. Can't get closer than that. 11 balls, <laughs> and Thorson's in the same spot Strickland was. 11 balls and shooting a break shot. You know, let's see what kind of, if he learns something from Earl, <laughs> I think he'll give it a little more respect than talking to the crowd before you shoot the shot. Okay, and then you're hitting the far ball over here. You might not break him open that, that good. Looks like he's going to run into the five ball. Once again, the ball's a little bit high, a little bit straight. Let's see what he does. He might roll it in with a high ball. Oh! I'm telling you. <laughs> I see this stuff coming. You know, I thought it only happened to me. You know, but uh, Holy crow. Earl's not in the easiest spot on the planet. No, no this is... There might be a combination that's dead over here. Earl should definitely right. look at that one ball. Uh, he can cut the one ball. 
if he has to with playing position off that ball is a little tricky. Right now he's looking at the combo. Yeah, this is so you're following a player uh, happens so frequently <laughs> when I play. It's uh, you know you're really upset that your opponent scratched because where's Earl here? You know he's got ball in hand, but he's got to get a combo. He's looking at that one ball. You know, if that one ball goes, if he can, you know, man, manufacture an angle of that, this combo looks like it's going to throw a little bit. Tommy, I know you've seen that scratch coming. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's a possibility. But does it get any more exciting than this, though? So, I mean, 125, 125, 139, 139. Yeah. Uh, I'm jumping. I'm on the edge of my seat. I'm like a kid going to camp for the first time. If it was 2 o'clock in the morning, I wouldn't fall asleep. This is how I sound when I'm excited, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is it. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Like, people 